Hi, I'm Dave Camlin, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about my new book, which is entitled Music Making and Civic Imagination, and is published this autumn, 2023, by Intellect Books. In this video, what I'm going to do is just to outline the overall structure of the book to give you a sense of what's in it and why it might be of interest. You'll notice there are loads of hearts all around the design of the book and this is to convey the idea that music making is a way of also making kin. When we make music, we make kin. We make connections, we connect with other people through the music that we make um, and, we've, and we form these deep bonds of trust and attachment. And the book is, is interested in exploring some of this, understanding how do, does this actually work? How does, it, how does music making function to, to build these strong bonds of trust and attachment? But it's also asking the question of what do we do with this capability? If music making is, has this capability to bring people together to form these bonds of trust and attachment, what do we do with it? And how can we put music making to service at this particular point in human history when we face so many existential challenges and threats? So the book is really making an argument around the unique nature of music making as a, as a human activity and how we might think of it differently to serve a more sustainable future for our species on a fragile planet. So I'll just tell you a little bit about the structure of the book. So the book is organised in eight chapters across three sections. And basically there's, a, there's an introductory section. The first chapter just outlines the current situation, some of the challenges that we face as a species and how music making might be seen to speak to some of those challenges. And then a second chapter that is just introducing my position making clear my positionality within the book as a, as a practicing musician and also as someone who's who's over the last 10 years found their way into academic work through Sage Gate said and my work with Trinity Lab and Conservatoire and the Royal College of Music then the core of the book is these four chapters which introduce, which build a, a theoretical perspective on music making and civic imagination the first of these introduces the idea of music as a complex adaptive system and what that means in terms of our understanding. The second of these chapters is about broadening the sense of, of musical performance to include more than just the performance of works but also the performance of relationships and the performance of values and the performance of identities. The, the fifth chapter is uh, a, a historical look at some of the uses that music and music making has been put to within the, the, the current system. And in particular, how music making has been um, used as a way of, of forming national identities. And then the final chapter in this core section, chapter six, is about uh, taking that idea one stage further and thinking about how can we use some of what we know about music making to imagine alternative, more sustainable futures. How can we think of music making as a resource for global sustainability? And then the book concludes with a, a, th a third section, which is just about how some of these ideas are applied. Chapter seven is about how these ideas have applied within my own practice. And then chapter eight is thinking about what all of this or any of this means for the education of musicians. If rather than just thinking of musician education as being training people to be performers, if we think of the education of musicians as being about preparing people to use their music in the world to achieve uh, particular goods or to be part of a global movement for sustainability, if we're thinking of music as a, as a resource for global sustainability, what are the implications of that for musicians and therefore for how we think about how we educate musicians? I'm just going to go back to the presentation and talk through a couple of these ideas in a bit more detail. This notion of a complex adaptive system is, is a really important one to the book because it's, it's trying to bring together a couple of 
um, threads that are very current in thinking about music education in general, uh, music in general, and, and, and lots of leisure activities in general, we, we're now beginning to realise that there is a complex web of mechanisms, different mechanisms that operate underneath the, the activities that, we, that we're talking about. And how we think about how all of these mechanisms um, relate to each other, how they re interact or, or more, more accurately interact, can give us insights into um, how music operates. For me, this has been about trying to understand the experience that often gets referred to as magic moments, those transcendental moments that people experience when they're making music. And my hunch is that what's happening in these kind of moments when time seems to stand still and we feel our own sense of self dissolving in a, in a, in a feeling of, of group identity is that there are multiple mechanisms that are at play and what we're experiencing is, is the, the transcendental experience is arising out of these different mechanisms all operating at the same time. Um, so the reason for grounding the the book in this in this discourse to start off with, I think is 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 to establish from the outset that what we're looking at is is, is a, a phenomenon that is complex, but is also understandable, and it's understandable in in both from looking at individual mechanisms, and also from looking at the totality of how people experience music making. Um, so that's the, the the part of the theoretical grounding. This idea of holistic praxis is something that might be familiar to you if you've read any of my previous work. It's based on this idea of what I've referred to as music in three dimensions, or the notion that essentially in any situation of music and music making, we're balancing three different dimensions of, of experience. One is the aesthetic dimension, um, and the quality of the sounds that are made in the process of making music. The second is the participatory dimension, um, which is to do with the performance of relationships and how music making creates these strong bonds of trust and attachment and forms social connection. And then the third dimension is what I ref is referred to as the paramusical, all those things, those impacts which go along with the music. And the, the, the idea of a holistic understanding of music is that we're balancing all three of these dimensions within any musical situation. In the book, I'm also advocating for uh, an enhanced understanding or a more, you know, broader understanding of performance. Um, we can certainly understand music as, as the performance of works for, for listeners and audiences, but also we can, and you know, based on that previous model we can think of music as the performance of relationships but I th I'm suggesting that also we can think of music making as the performance of particular values which I discuss in the book as being to do with love and reciprocity and democratic justice so there's also the performance of values that's going on and it's also about the performance of identities music making has been implicated in how we form social identities in terms of the you know the people that we know music making can bring us together can help form community but certainly over time music making has also been used to form biographical identities i.e to feel a kinship relation with people that we may not have met or may never meet so you know we can sing a national anthem and feel a sense of kinship with everybody else that, um, that, that that might know that national anthem, even though we may never meet them, using almost like a, a trick of the imagination and our intention to invoke a sense of kinship with people that we that we don't know. And that one of the main arguments of, of the book is simply that we can use that capacity of music making to form um, identities that are more globally focused. But, but which are rooted in a local identity. So the book is looking at notions of how music has been used ac across evolution um, and thinking of it as an interstice in the, in, in, in the kind of, of, of you know, our everyday lives. And what I mean by an interstice is just simply somewhere that exists outside of, the, of, of everyday life, another world of virtual time, John Blacking called it. Um, when, and, where, and Thomas Trudeau talks about it as providing alternative models f for citizenship. 
So uh, this idea of an interstice is something that, com- that, that comes up throughout the book as somewhere that we can in- inhabit um, in terms of making alternative kind of worlds to the ones that we, that, we, that we live in our everyday lives. And because of that, that we can use music, we can repurpose music making as a way of imagining more global identities. And that's where the civic imagination comes in. The civic imagination has a number of dialects to it. Um, and Beocci and the, other, the original authors of the, the, the ideas about civic imagination talk about these as cognitive roadmaps or moral compasses that help people make sense of their place in the political world. The dialects of civic imagination are to do with redistributing power and privilege, building community solidarity and solving problems. And music making speaks to at least two of those quite quite strongly, I think. So the, 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 the final theoretical chapter in the book is about bringing together um, all of the ideas that have, that have followed through it and then, the, 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 and then applying it within this situation. So the, the, the chapter in the book that's called This Musician is basically taking this idea that to be a musician is always only ever to be this musician. I can only ever be the musician that I am. But to be musical is always being this musician with these people, other individuals with their own unique biographies. And to be musical within these cultures and traditions, whatever they might be, and with these materials, and in this situation, in this place, this institution. So music making is constantly shifting. Part of the reason for developing this aspect of of, of, of music making is to really um, to encourage uh, people, especially people just starting out in their journey as, as musicians and community musicians, that there is no right way of being a musician in the world. There is only your way of being a musician in the world. And that's the same for everybody that you work with. So that's broadly um, what the what the what the book is about. There is a website. So if you want to if you want to see more about the book, you can, you can scan this QR code that will take you to a website which I'll keep updated with more information about the book as we go on. You can also find a copy of this Prezi um, on that website as well. So if you want to explore the ideas for yourself, then please do just go in and, and, uh, and, and have a look around. And do get in touch if there's any questions about the book that you that interest you or anything that um, that you see uh, yeah, that, you, that you'd like to chat with me about I'd love to uh, follow up a a conversation with you so uh, yeah that's my book music making and civic imagination and I hope you enjoy it